start with you, by the way, Emily. Do you even believe that concept? Because there's been a few economists out there that are saying mm. we don't even really have this uh, black hole. It's all down to the way the accountants is done. In your mind, do we have a black hole? Did we need this budget today? Well, we've got a big deficit and we've got a huge national debt. Uh, and that was made worse by the lockdown, which, of course, when Rishi Sunak spent billions and billions and billions while most of the economy was shut down and people were paid to stay at home, that was a choice. That's made the debt far worse. And, of course, Jeremy Hunt, who we all know was very, very pro a Chinese-style lockdown at that point, too. So these are things are worth remembering. On the fiscal hole itself, it's very much up for debate, as you say. Some people are wondering whether it's an over-exaggeration, it's overstated. Um, could it be that it might be far uh, smaller or that we can spend more time filling it? Um, it's hard to say. I would have liked to see more emphasis on trying to get more taxpayer revenue in through boosting um, investment in this country, through boosting economic growth, that sort of thing that will bring in longer term more tax revenue instead of clobbering people and having this very short termist view on trying to please the markets, keep everything steady in that way, please the OBR, please the Bank of England. But what about everyday citizens? What about Indeed. all of us? What about them? Uh, let me talk to you about taxes specifically. Mm. Like I was mentioning a couple of times so far, I've not been subtle in my hints. We've got the highest tax burden in mm. seven decades. This is a tour government, just in case you've mm. forgotten, because they've changed so often, the, the chancellors, it's hard to keep up. Uh, all uh, the tax thresholds, with the exception of the 45p one, remains uh, solid, static until 2028, which, by the way, is kind of irrelevant, because we're going to have a, an election before then. But anyway, we'll stick with the facts, 2028. No. Uh, was that right in your mind? Yeah, so for me, this feels like stealth taxes instead of wealth taxes. Now, I let me explain that. In many ways, the UK tax, the amount of tax that the UK government takes in this country is quite low compared to other countries, right? Countries like Germany have got a higher tax take that they have, and it's no coincidence that they're growing faster than us because that money is then spent on the things that drive growth, things like investments, right? Are you saying that high tax burden equals growth? Well, uh, no, I'm saying that money to spend yeah, on investments, money to spend economy to us, money to spend on investments to then drive that growth is what we need in this country. Now, that's not me saying often when we talk about tax, we assume that it means everyone blanket has higher taxes, right? That many of the people in this room have those higher taxes. Instead, we could make the political choice to put taxes on places that could bear that burden a bit like more. What? Like, for example, a 1%, little 1% little tax on people with assets over, say, worth of, of £10 million, which would raise about £10 billion, pounds, right? If we were to what do close... You mean so you've got an asset, let's just say your house, your primary residence is... If you're earning ten million, yeah, if, you, oh, if you're... You uh, income? No, no, from, much of that will come from wealth for people earning that amount of money, right? So if we're taxing 1% on the wealth earning of the how? people who are earning, who have, whose income what is over £10 million, year, though? Huh? Very short termist. What do you do next? Well, hang on, let's no, you level, you level theory. So you, if you've sorry. got a salary of ten million pounds. No, 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 you, I want to know if you're single. It's people after, we've ascertained, <laughs> that, <laughs> after we've ascertained that, you want to do what? We you are we are bad in this country at taxing wealth, right? We we're very good. Governments are very good at taxing our income if we're working. They're not so good at taxing wealth. So, for example, overall, we, as a percentage of our money that we're, we're getting in as workers, paying more than the people who are getting a lot of their money from sitting on assets, you know, uh, paintings, many, many, many houses and so on. So there's always been an argument in this country, which I think is right, to make sure that we're having an approach to people earning income from that wealth, from those assets but they have that's similar changed that. They've, they've cut the uh, tax and as, dividend stuff. They've yeah. today cut the uh, capital gains threshold in terms of tax free. But they could have they could have closed the non-DOM loophole, for example. This is a classic example of how you need to... It's not the blanket sort of, we need to impose taxes on everyone. It's we need to make sure that we're targeting taxes on places that traditionally have not been taxed so much, right? May I just make one point on the wealth tax mm. issue? Because it does sound good, you know, a lot of people with big assets. Um, perhaps we can just, you know, tax them a little bit more and, and we'll all be... Uh, happy and have lots more money to spend on things like the NHS. But the problem is, is that wealth taxes have been tried and they failed where they were tried. So France has had all sorts of different wealth taxes. What happened? You had millionaires move out of the country. You had people hide their assets. You had so much bureaucracy because it came down to even what you're painting in your 
big drawing room is worth. They tried to calculate what every single asset you had was worth. And they didn't make barely any money out of it. And also, if you deplete someone's assets one year, what are you going to do next year? You'll have less to tax. You're not, but you're so not. So it's very short termist, and the only way to get the tax, but to get tax revenue up, is unfortunately to tax everyone. No, I don't think that's the case. I mean, I think in Britain we do a better job than France when it comes to making sure that we levy those wealth taxes effectively. And it's not a hundred percent tax on certain bits of wealth we're calling for, which means that you'd run those taxes down. It's just a small amount. Like in this country, we have been in a situation where we do not tax wealth as much as we're taxing. Income, and I just think that that's. Why don't we unfair. try and grow the pie instead? Yes, let's but grow we need, the pie. Everyone. But you need to make. But hang on a minute. You need to make those investments. We cannot grow the pie if we've got massive waiting lists in our health service, and to the point where the labour market, where the people who are out there working and growing that pie, are held back from. Let's, I agree. I agree. But the NHS, we're spending upwards of 170 billion pounds a year on the NHS, we need to be talking to NHS management and finding out why on earth we have NHS waiting lists so long and why money isn't going to the front line. Agreed. Agreed. I agree. I agree. But with, on, on that very quickly, right, the, it's often we think we're just like, oh, we're chucking this cash into the NHS and, and we're not getting outcomes. Absolutely right that we think that because we're clearly not. But we have to think about where that money is going. Again, I must stress that that money has not gone into upgrading the kit, the, the basic maintenance bill, for example, that will help get those waiting lists down. And just to say, every single country in the world is spending lots of money on its health system. It is a fundamental thing for our society to spend that money. If we look at the European average of how much money they are spending every year, increasing their health budgets, we, we are on average 40 billion a year lower than they are investing well, in their health system.